Hey yo, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the Litco question 322, coin change. And by the way guys, this question has been asked by Amazon. Okay, you're given coins of different dimensions and a total amount of money. Write a function to compute the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. If that amount of money cannot be made, made up by any combinations of the coins, return minus one. You might assume that you have an infinite number of each kind of coin. Here are some examples, so these are our coins, 1, 2 and 5, and amount is equal to 11. The output should be 3, because uh, the combination with the fewest amount of coins would be like 5, 5 and 1, and in total it will make the amount of 11. Of course, like you would possibly, like you could give a change having, I don't know, 11 coins of uh, domination of 1, or like 5 coins of 2 plus 1 coin of 1, it will still be 11. However, it's not the minimum amount of possible coins, so the answer should be 3. Here are some other examples in this case, because we only have one coin which is equal to 2, but amount is greater than that single coin, and if you like do, take even like 2 coins, the amount will be equal to 4, not to 3, so you can give a change and basically you return minus 1. Here another case, if amount is equal to 0, you just return 0, in this example, we have only one coin, and amount, and this coin is equal to one. Amount is equal to one. The output should be one. However, guys, you need to understand one thing: that when you will calculate the change with the fewest amount of coins, it will not mean that, like you know, that you first of all need to consider the coins with the largest denomination as possible. You know, first of all, take like in this case as many fives as you can, and after that, you know, just like add some smaller coins to make the amount. It will not mean like that, because let me just show you another example. Okay, so in this example amount is equal to 6 and the coins which we have are 1, 3 and 4. Okay, the coin with the largest denomination is 4, okay, you can take 4, but also, you know, to get to this, to make amount which is equal to 6, you will need like another coin of 1 plus another coin of 1. It will be equal to 6 in this case. However, it's not like the answer with the with the fewest amount of coins because instead you would you can just use like you know the coin which is equal to three plus another coin which is equal to three and you will make co and you will make six as well but having two coins instead of three coins so just keep that in mind okay so how can we solve this question one of the possible approaches would be to solve this question dynamically which means that like to solve the problem we can split it first of all into some sub problems and solve these sub problems first in this case like if the amount is equal to 6 let's first of all calculate you know the fewest amount of coins to give the change for let's say amount which is equal to 0 after that once we have calculated the fewest coins to give a change for amount of which is equal to 0 and let's calculate for amount which is equal to 1 and so on until we reach the 6 but you know, before that, we will solve this like sub problems first. Let me quickly write the code, and I will be with you in a few seconds. Okay, guys, let me explain you what we have here. First of all, let's create our DP array of size amount plus one. It will allow us to basically you know, calculate to solve the sub problems to calculate um, the amount of fewest coin of fewest coins for all the sub amounts. So, if we say amount initially is equal to six, so this array is of size seven because six plus one, it will allow us to you know solve all the sub problems for all the amounts from zero up to six, including this six. After that, let's have a for loop. Let's iterate through you know all these possible sub amounts from one until the amount including this amount so if we again consider this example we will iterate from one to six including six because less are equal here we have dp of i is equal to amount plus one because we are going to you know calculate the fewest amount of coins to give the change that's why to do some comparisons and you know take the minimum value we basically are assigning right now dp of i to be equal to value which is impossible so amount plus one because like in this case it will be like amount plus one is equal to seven you know it's kind of out of bonds so this is impossible value but that's fine after that we are iterating through our array of coins and we'll consider every single coin which we have there however in this if statement we cannot do anything with the coins which are greater than the current value of i so if coin is less 
or equal to i, only in this case we do something with our current dp value, current dp of i value. Because, for example, if i is equal, let's say, I know, to 2, so the current sub amount, if it's equal to 2, but the coin which we're considering is equal to 4, you know, 4 is greater than this 2, so you cannot give the change for the amount of if you if you have just the coin which is equal to 4. It's just impossible to give a change in this case. But if it's possible, we just basically take the current sub amount, so we take the dp of i, and we just basically take the best possible value, uh, which will give us like the value with the fewest amount of coins, so we do mass.min dp of i and dp of i minus coin plus 1. Don't worry, I will go through it with you like through this line of code with you in a few seconds because this is the most important line of code and it's probably quite tricky. So it will allow us to basically update all the values in the DP array. So we'll solve all the sub problems for for like you know every possible sub amount and also we'll solve the, the final amount as well. And then like in the end in case if we didn't update the final value in our DP array, so in case if it's impossible to basically make a change, like let's say as in example two, so in this case it's impossible to give a change, so we need to return minus one. And then like if DP of amount is equal to amount plus one, so this like impossible value, which means that we can give a change, so we just return minus one, otherwise we return the last value from our DP array. Okay, what it all means. Now to just basically for better understanding. Let's just consider this example again, and we just let's go through this code just slowly, step by step. Okay, if amount is equal to six, and these are our coins, it means that okay, we call this coin change method. We create the DP array, right, of size seven in this case because amount plus one, six plus one is equal to seven. And you know when you create the array, initially all the values are equal to zero there. So we have seven zeros here, this is our DP array. After that, we will go inside our for loop. Then like initially i will be equal to one because of this thing here. So i is equal to one. DP of one is equal to the amount plus one. So we take this value, we put seven here because six plus one is seven. After that, we will iterate through all of our coins. So we have the three coins here. Basically, if the current coin is less or equal than i, so i is equal to one, the first coin here is 1, so yeah, okay, we go inside this if statement, and then we do just like dp of i, so dp of, of this value is equal to mass.min of the current value, because dp of i, and the value which is equal to dp i minus coin plus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, plus 1. Okay, so dp of 0 is basically the value here, plus 1, so 1, it will be equal to 1. 1 is less than the current value, less than 7, so we put 1 here. We updated the current dp of i, after that we okay, will we'll go out from the if statement and we will consider the next coin, the coin which is equal to 3. However, because this 3 is not less or equal to 1, in this case we will not consider this coin because it's just, you know, greater than this current sub amount, so we cannot make a change from it. So we will go next iteration of the for loop, again coin 4, and yeah, it will not work again, so we'll go on the next iteration of this like big for loop, and i will be equal to 2 after that. i is pointing to value here, we update the current value, we set it to amount plus 1, so it's equal to 7 right now. Iterating through our coins, so the first coin, which is equal to 1, yes, we are going inside this if statement, and we do like dp of i, so 7, the value here, and we take the mass mean of dp of i, so 7 and dp of i minus coin, 2 minus coin which is equal to 1, so the value here plus 1, the value here plus 1 is equal to 2, okay, it's less than 7, so we put the value 2 here, we'll go on the next iteration of the for loop, after that, okay, the coin will be equal to 3, this if statement doesn't work, we will consider coin 4, this if statement will not work again, okay, next iteration of this big for loop, i will be equal to 3 after that. This is our current tp array, okay, we update the value i, so 7, we will go inside this for loop, we will consider the coin which is equal to 1, then tp of i is equal to mass.min of the current value and the value of tp i minus coin plus 1. So tp i minus coin is the value here plus 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is less than 7. 
update the value here, which means that right now, so far, like to calculate, like to give the change with the fewest, fewest amount of coins, if the amount is equal to three, we need like three coins. However, now guys, we will go on the next iteration of this for loop and we'll consider the coin, which is equal to three. And now we will go inside this if statement with the coin, which is equal to three. So dp of i, the value here, is equal to mass.min of the current value, which is equal to three, and dp of i minus coin. So i is equal to three, three minus coin, minus this coin. So index zero, basically. Index zero, we have like zero here plus one. In total, we will have one. One is less than three. So we update the value here. And indeed, like, okay, if you just start it, right, and you give one coin, which is equal to three, to give the change for amount, which is equal to three, with this coin, you can just, like, give one coin and you will give the change. So we update the value here. Perfect. Then we'll consider the coin, which is equal to four. However, again, we will not go inside the save statement. So next iteration of our for loop, and I will be equal to four. I is equal to four. Okay, update the value here. Index four is equal to seven. Let's go inside the for loop. Let's consider the first coin. Basically, we will take the coin here, we will do plus one, we will update to two here. After that next iteration of the for loop, we'll consider the coin which is equal to three, mass.min of the current value and dp of i minus coin. So four minus three, the value here, plus one. It will be like two. Right now we already have two here, so we will not update anything <clears throat> because the values are the same. But guys, however, after that, we will go on the next iteration of the for loop and we will consider the coin, which is equal to four right now. The current value of TP of i is equal to two. However, this thing will give us like TP of four minus coin. So four minus four index zero plus one, it will be equal to one. One is less than two. We put one here and then did right to make the amount which is equal to four and having our coins, we just need one coin and exactly one is here, perfect. Then guys, next iteration of our for loop, when i will be equal to five, as we just did like for the coin which is equal to one, so basically we'll put two here, then next iteration is the coin three, we have two here, but basically dp of five minus three, the value here plus one is equal to three, so we will not update the value here. Next iteration of the for loop, coin is equal to four, current value is equal to two, then dp of five minus four, the value here, plus one, it's equal to two again, so yeah, two is equal to two, it will stay as it is right now. Okay, our final iteration of the for loop after that, when i is equal to six, guys, we are pointing at this element, we'll update it, and it will be equal to seven, then we'll go inside our for loop, so we'll consider the this coin right now, coin which is equal to one. Okay, we will update. This seven will be equal to three. After that, we will consider another coin. We take the mean of the current value and TP of i minus coin. So six minus coin three, it will be index three, the value here, which is equal to one. Then we do plus one and it's two. Two is less than three. We put two here. The next iteration of the for loop, we'll consider the coin which is equal to four. The current value is two. Six minus four, it's index two, but we have two here, two plus one, it's not less than two. So that's it, guys. Then we'll go outside this for loop and we just basically check if the last value from the ZP array is not equal to amount plus one. So that's the case when, you know, we cannot give the change because it's just impossible. If it's not the case, we just return the va last value of our DP array. In this case, we will return this value basically. Just before I submit a quick optimization, because you know we iterate through the coins, and every time we have this if statement to just you know don't use the extra sources. What if we just basically sort the array of coins? After that, if the coin is not less or equal than i. If it's not the case, and because array is sorted, it will mean that there's no point to just check the rest of the coins array, so we just can break basically, just a small optimization. And yeah, I think that's it. Let me just run the code, guys. Code works. Let me submit. Perfect, guys. 90, almost 96%. I hope it's clear. I hope that this like explanation helped you a bit. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and subscribe. Challenge your friends to see if they can solve this question or not. And guys, 
I will see you in the next video. Good luck.